Hello and welcome to episode five of History Behind the Page, the series where you get to know more about the person behind your favorite history pages. Today we have two guests. They are behind the We Happy Few. We have Leighton, the mastermind behind We Happy Few, a fellow history lover and just an all around great person. And then we have Matthew, who is also behind the page as well. And you guys know him as playing Floyd Talbert and Band of Brothers. So this is a live Q&A as well. So you are more than welcome to ask questions and we'll get to them as many as we can within the allotted time. If you want to submit questions on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, there is a question mark bubble. Please submit your questions there as if they get posted in the comments, sometimes they, they get lost and we wanna be able to make sure that you have the opportunity to ask <clears throat> a question. So let's go ahead and get this party going. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Matthew and Layton. It'll be just a second. Hey, Matthew. Hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you? <laughs> uh, not too bad, not too bad. I just woke up. I apologize to everybody. I just woke up. Uh, so yeah. I'm just getting myself situated. Um, I had a bit of a situation yesterday, so I ended up driving all night. Oh no! Uh, so I'm a little bit like this, but yeah, I've just, I'm just—I'm ready. I'm—I'm I'm happy. I'm here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> all right. And I'm ready to rock ready whenever to you are. Perfect. Well, let's get Leighton on if Leighton can discover how to accept an invitation. Yeah, he's just—he's he, just—he's uh, just WhatsApped me on how to get on here, and now he's putting "I'm here too." So I'm... well done. <laughs> Leighton, I sent you an invitation. You gotta accept it. It's a blue thing that pops up, Leighton. <laughs> let's, let's try this again. <laughs> Leighton, are you a Velociraptor now? Leighton is unable to join. What? Got my band of brothers up in the background. Oh, send, send it to We Happy Few. Oh, okay. Oh, that's We Happy Few, isn't it? Okay, go. Go on, well, fellas. Don't go very well. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Pingu soup. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Oh, not bad. Thank you. Good, Rack good. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, guys, so much for coming on and doing this live. Um, we got a lot of great questions, and people want to know more about, you know, the We Happy Few page, so kind of a Wait, perfect, um, perfect perfect way. So let's, I guess, just get everything started. But you know, how did how did We Happy Few come about? How did it get started? Uh, all right, I'll 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 <laughs> handle this one, and then you tell me whether I'm just making it up because I'm my father's son, and I never let uh, <laughs> the truth get in the way of a good story. Um, Leighton runs uh, his own. Uh, project where he gets uh, it's called Curahi signings so he gets uh, guys that were in band uh, sign stuff he gets fans who want stuff signed and he, he, he hooks up with the guys and uh, and then you know that's that's what he does and he came to me and said will you sign a bunch of stuff and I said yeah okay that's fine and he's like what's your fee and I was like what he's like what's your fee and I was like uh, uh, do people pay for this <laughs> And uh, so we got together. He came up to see me up where I live. We went to the pub and did some signings. But because it was like, I don't know, it was, wasn't in person. It just felt a bit like I'm not really giving people enough here. So there was some um, talk about maybe doing some more signings. And I was like, well, can we do it on Zoom or something? Can I actually speak to the people and be like, because I don't know Dave. And it's like, this is to Dave. Hi, Dave. Uh, I'd actually like to say hi to Dave in real life. So... We sort of threw around the idea of maybe doing it live on Zoom, you know, get some guys in and say, all right, mate, yes, what do you want to write? Uh, and then it suddenly, Leighton being Leighton, Leighton takes things to the extreme, like straight away. Like, you know, it's like, should we have a game of football? Hey, maybe we can get Diego Maradona to play. Uh, so that's the kind of what happened with it. It was, like, it was like, yeah, what about a Zoom? And I was like, maybe we can get a couple of guys on a Zoom as well. And maybe I'll ask him some questions. And then it just went straight away. Well, what if we get like uh, Shane and Lucy and no one's ever seen Lucy and Shane together and we'll get them and we'll chat. And it just, it just went, just spiraled off completely. <laughs> but uh, it, it's all his, he's, he's the energy behind it. I'm just a tit in the, 
headband uh, sitting there asking questions. That's how it started. Am I, am I right with that, Lane? Yeah, yeah, do you know what? I'd say 95% right on that. Um, <clears throat> because the year before, I, well, I met Matt and Bastone in 2019 with him and Shane and Chris Langlois. Um, and you're like, oh, you're always met, you know, commenting on my Facebook, you little twat, and started doing Alan Partridge quotes and what have you. Um, and then I think we just started chatting a little bit more, especially around this time of year with this rugby tournament going on. And I got Matt a shirt signed by some pretty decent players. And Matt didn't know this at the time, but <clears throat> I'd spoken to a company in, that's the one. I'd spoken to, um, I'd been speaking to a company based in Gloucestershire about doing a UK live version and had Tim Matthews who played Payne Carla as sort of point of contact. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the guys that's interested. Obviously Matt was out of the loop at that time, I believe, with all the guys and there's about 10 of them. And when I, after, after I'd sent Matt the shirt, he's like, I've got this, I've got this idea. Um, I want to do a podcast, you know, a bit of fan Q and A. I was like, all right. And I, I wasn't really too au fait with podcasts. I didn't really listen to them at the time. And I thought, oh, well, yeah, yeah, so that's good. But this is going on at the moment. We have a live event, you know, there was, and that was in the plan. And then COVID kicked in and obviously just went really quiet. Fast forward, what, you know, nine, you know, 11 months, something like that. I'd heard Matt on a reenactors podcast and when I'd heard him on a previous podcast, he sounded like he didn't want to be there. And I think I've told you this. I thought he just sounded, yeah, yeah. He did, you know, he wasn't his energetic self. Um, so I remember texting him after saying, you're right, maybe you didn't sound too happy on that one. But on this reenactors podcast, he had full of energy, you know, and um, yeah, he had absolutely full of energy. And I'd watched the day before the platoon documentary by what Paul Sanchez did. Um, it's about three years old, but I, I loved it. I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And I thought, I've got this fucking idea. We love to swear. Sorry. I know it's a certain time. Sorry. Um, you rebe- I've got this you idea. Rebe- you know already, mate. So carry on. <laughs> <laughs> sorry if I dropped the F bomb. Um, I know there's a thousand bicycle outside my window, so sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, I said, you know, I watched this documentary and I thought it's brilliant. They don't really talk history, they talk about their experiences. I thought maybe we can do something like that because when I spoke to, oh, who is that? I spoke to, it might be Ben Kaplan. And he said, apologies if Ben's listening and, or listens to this. You know, I think it was, was it Ben? And he said, oh, I, yeah, you know, yeah, they get us, you know, up on stage talking history. And he's like, I'm not a historian. I'm an actor. So asking me what this movement is and what was going through my mind when I'm running across the field getting shot at, I was like, I don't know, I'm an actor. So I, that's what I wanted to do is sort of initially was about the actor's experience on each episode. And I think initially we were speaking about Maggio and O'Keefe, weren't we, for the first one originally? Yeah. And then obviously yeah. Matt had this, brainstorm ideas are actually what about Shane and Lucy and obviously that's the start you know that was it that was the sound point the sort of first reunion of Shane and Lucy and obviously we had David Leland jump on we had Ben jump on we had Doug Allen jump on Chris Langwa jump on and yeah origin story right there origin story so you guys originally wanted to start it off with the podcast right yeah that was yeah. The, about, about two years ago yeah about two years ago now you guys are doing it so how was it starting a page in the middle of a global pandemic uh, pretty easy time wise because there's nothing else. To do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm not in any way technical, so uh, like I say, all of that's latent anyway. Um, but it was it, it was really cool. What was really cool about it is that we were getting the sense that people really kind of needed it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't sound like pretentious <laughs> or. or <laughs> self-important but people were really thanking us afterwards like man i really needed to be really cool to like everyone just kind of get together because as much as we can as well we're trying to interact with people that are on the zoom and stuff as well it, 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 and i apologize latterly for not getting more sort of like q a stuff going on when we do it it's just because uh, uh, it makes my head pop having all these like things going on um and i have to kind of like edit as i go along as i'm making up the questions so it's easier if i field some before and then write them down but it's it, it's cool that then the guys they generally sort of hang around and say hi to people and, and all that kind of business mm-hmm. so it just became um it, it be- really quickly became a, like a collective like the same people buy the tickets straight away the second they go on sale like yes i'm really looking forward to that um which was great especially as we you know 
we took it in different directions. We did watch alongs and all that stuff. A lot of it, I think, was then you get guys interacting with one another. Like on here, like I see these comments going on as well. It, it sort of, uh, you know, it became like a group group dynamic thing rather than like something we were doing that had a, a fan base per se. Mm -hmm. it, it was like people sort of in, into it j just to be a part of it. And we get people yeah. um, who I won't name names, but like <laughs> they'd be like, oh, mate, I can't make it next week. But here's the ticket money anyway, because I just want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about that. Definitely about, yeah. Really cool. Um, and I think people have made friends from it. Um, I've seen, you know, um, obviously Diane, who's joined as a social media guru. Um, you know, she I've noticed, you know, she's made friends from from it. Um, you know, the actors, you know, Freddie, Joe, Scott Gibson, you know, when they've started interacting with people. And it's, it's amazing. And I think one of the things was we want to give that. I know with podcasting, um, <clears throat> you don't have that personal experience where I think that by having people involved in the recording of, of the, the podcast, that they can be there listening in. Um, and like I said, I've seen some of the actors say, oh, hi, there's so-and-so. Oh, my God, there's so-and-so. You know, Shane's done it. Jimmy Maggio's done it. They're like, oh, my God, there's an act. There's, I, I know all these people. Cause I've, you know, and I think that made it really nice as well. Um, without getting the families on, I think that's been a big thing for us as well. So, you know, we found um, Hubler's grandnephew, obviously the U.S. Marine, you know, built like a brick shit house, um, which Hubler said he was in the army. Oh, you know, what made you join the army? He's like, I'm a fucking Marine. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, yeah, you know, um, you know, we've had, you know, Pat, you know, Matthew Hickey say hello to O'Keefe's widow, daughter, grandchildren. You know, that was pretty friggin' epic. That one was, and that's probably my yeah, favorite one, if I'm honest. Be, um, is it Harry Welsh's granddaughter saying that oh. Rick had the same smile? You've got my grandfather's smile. Oh, that was really cool. Thanks. That was really, you can feel everyone just going, Phew. <laughs> <laughs> it made it work. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. How, um, what is the process of wrangling people up to be to join? Oh, it is it, that, uh, it, that's a that's a bipartisan uh, attack, uh, pincer maneuver. Basically, Leighton has no shame and will go to any lengths to get people on the one hand that I don't really know or have a relationship with, he'll literally just go and knock on their door and say, you, this is your cat. You can have it back if you come on the podcast. Uh, or I just beg people and nag them like a two year old child until they come on. Uh, we've had some, it's good if you, like, like Donnie Wahlberg was a good example. Actually Kirk as well was a good example. They are both good friends with Nick Aaron who played Popeye Wynn. And so I have to nag him to nag them and then just be on his back to nag them uh, constantly. And and, and especially on those lives, there's like, there's like no guarantee they're going to show up. Like the jeopardy that lies. We're like this before. And like, <laughs> Please. There's no guarantee they're actually going to show up. Like, you know, yeah, but, you know, I was busy. You know, these are actors, they're busy. And, like, and Scott, Scott Grimes is the one. He's kind of a will of the wisp, Scott Grimes. And the under over on him actually showing up wasn't wasn't great, was it? Like, uh, Chris Langlois. That was cool. amazing. What's the chance that he's actually going to show? Uh, and he was the first one on, wasn't he? He was, yeah. I, 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 he's the only one I fanboyed over, wasn't he? Um, cause I yeah. got excited when he <laughs> he's Yeah, he, 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 he was my son's birthday that night. Um, <laughs> when we podcast uh, when he did that Zoom event, rather. And so we got Scott to say happy birthday to my son as Steve from American Dad. No. <laughs> and he was recording it, but we had to re record it because he's like, no, I can't do the But all you can hear is late. Like, oh, oh, it's actually happening. It's happening. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Like the whole way through. <laughs> I didn't yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one uh, that's the only one I fanboyed over oh mine was Jacob Pitts when we did the uh, Pacific one you know, well, when he did, yeah, the... yeah he was class he uh, was really quiet and then after the show he was it was brilliant you know yeah. actually about the Miscuzzi scene in Euro Trip was a personal highlight again um, yeah, just, that, that Pacific was pretty special as well yeah yeah that and Jenny McCarthy's legs that was quite good wasn't it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
what has what has been the most difficult episode to like arrange or get arranged? Um, pretty much, I don't know where I was going with that. <clears throat> no, I no, I, I take um, bum, 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 bum. the most difficult one was I don't know maybe the first one. Do you think? No, I, no, Shane, I'd probably say no. Shane was say, cool. Could I get? I managed. Same. Managed to charm on these, yeah. Uh, Probably one of the Eon, Eon, Eon Bailey, Eon Bailey. That was a tri- yeah, that was the trickiest one. Yeah, he wasn't all that keen on coming on oh. uh, for personal reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was in a he, he was kind of in a different state of mind. And he basically had said, Listen, uh, you know, I'm not in a good, I'm not in a good mood. I'm not in a good place at the moment, but you know, and I don't really want to come on, but you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I just, you know, but if, you know, apart from that, if you, if you want me, I'll still come on. And I just went, good, I'll see you then, then. Uh, so then he came on and he's like, like the first 20 minutes is like mm. in a really bad mood. And then he just, he lightened up and he was, you know, he, he's a very erudite of a man. He, and he was great, but he, he was surfing a totally different vibe. He was very pissed off and, at life for some completely different reason it wasn't anything to do with the what we were doing at the band stuff he just he just was very irritated at life that day but we warmed him up a little bit which is good so yeah i guess that was the most tricky to handle but i still think the one i was most nervous about was more to platoon with scott grimes and uh, mm. Richard. yeah i wasn't sure any of those guys were going to show up uh, Were you nervous because you didn't think they would show up, or yeah. nervous because yeah, yeah? I mean, and the thing is, is like like Scott will own this as well, but like and Richard Spade Jr. does a brilliant impersonation of him, and he'll just be like, like this is Scott Grimes. You're like, Scott, you coming out for a beer tonight? He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You coming? Yeah, I'll definitely be there. Right, because we're there. We're in the bar. Yeah, sure, I'm on my way. Scott, you coming? Yeah, definitely. I'm in a taxi. Yep. Yeah, so you definitely coming? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm stood outside. Yeah, yeah. I'm not coming. That's that's Scott totally. <laughs> <laughs> So he's going to do something then whoosh, disappears. So I, I was very surprised he was there and I was very, very thankful. Uh, so yeah, that was what I was most nervous about, I think. All of them. What has been the the easiest or best episode in your guys' eyes? Oh, uh, no, 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 no uh, qualms about this one. Definitely the episode nine one. Because that was Ross McCall, oh, yeah. Gomez, yeah. Maddio, and Yos. No, uh, all of them. All off and O'Keefe, yeah. Uh, I had never really had much dealings with all off, and when we do, because we do a little tech rehearsal about an hour and a half before, about half an hour before we let people into the room, we just sort of, we just make sure everyone's mic's working and everything. <laughs> He's just slanging me off, going on. What the fuck? The world? I was like, oh god, all off's a lunatic. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, but he was very well behaved when we did it. But those three, Mario Gomez, McCall, yeah. are so polished at what they do because they tour, they've done a lot of tours and they fielded a lot of questions and they just dovetail their answers um, and they're all great speakers. So the second we just started, I just had like, I always had like a, like a sheaf of papers like this. I think I asked about three questions and I was just letting them roll with it and I was just coming in a little bit and pushing them this way and that. But, but basically they just ran the show themselves and then they yeah, just was- they left, did they? I mean, the thing with We Happy Few stuff is, like the real ticket is when we stop recording and everybody leaves as all the actors stick about and then it just becomes like totally X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> totally X-rated and foul mouths and rude and, and fun. And, and they, they stayed on for ages, didn't they? Uh, yeah, um, Matt Hickey who joined that one, he came back on. Um, a few of them have stayed on after a while, haven't they? Because I think when we had a specific the, one, the specific one, I Fred was like, yeah, Matt went off, and Freddie's like, you. <clears throat> I finished sort of hosting that Zoom with, with the Pacific mm. guys. Uh, then I went downstairs and I made dinner. And I think I put my daughter to bed, took a bath, took a run, finished my novel, came back, and he was still, guys were still on. <laughs> still going on at one another. Yeah. All right, fair I enough. Was, I was, yeah, I think I was Freddie, just sort of, he told them all to oh, stay on, and they, they stayed on. Yeah. Um, you sort of have to put yourself away sometimes because it, it gets a bit late. Yeah, um, I just leave. I just say, I'll leave and look after you, and then I leave. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's quite, yeah, it's quite interesting. You, said, you sort of get to ask him your own little questions. Like when we had Kirk on, um, 
got to ask him a little bit about Kingdom, which he was in. I thought he had a fantastic role in Kingdom and told him I was really disappointed that they didn't explore his character a little bit more, which he seemed really cool about. And it was really kind of cool to chat about why it got cancelled or why he didn't get renewed. Um, so that was pretty cool, yeah. Um, but I don't really get to like interact with a lot of them like that. That's obviously Matt, who does the herding of the cats with that. It's like, so if I get the guys that I've done assignments with, sitting, you know, Craig Keeney, Matt Hickey, and um, I think I helped you with David Leland, but I think Chris Lang will help out quite a lot with that as well. Uh, so but it's, it's been pretty awesome. With Kirk, so what, when was Boot Camp? It was like 21 years ago when we did the Zoom, right? <laughs> Kirk, Kirk and I have always had a slightly spiky relationship, and I wondered whether he'd ever forgiven me for something that happened on boot camp. Oh, and, and he hadn't. He hadn't. He started to tell a story, you know, things, you know something or other, and I knew where he was going with it. <laughs> like, there, was a, there was an incident on boot camp where we were attacking a bridge, right? So he ran out of the undergrowth, and you hit the bridge, and it, people had to peel off from one side to the other like that. And they weren't doing it how it was supposed... This is how I remember it. Everyone was just kind of running everywhere. So I... I grabbed the back of Kirk's backpack and I threw him to one side of the bridge like that. And I was like, you go that side. And then we went running. And uh, I didn't know this, but I think he'd fallen and twisted his, twisted his ankle slightly. And then like that night, uh, um, uh, we were in the, he's sleeping in the bed opposite me in the barracks. He's like, you and me are going to have a talk. You and me are going to have a good talk. <laughs> and I thought, well, well, he's spiky. Uh, and he's never forgiven me. It's funny what oh my God. Me. On that Dreamcast, he was like, Matthew, threw me to the <laughs> side. And I was like, uh, yes, can we can we move past that now? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 21 years, let's move past it. Oh, that's yeah, crazy. that's what I think. But no, yeah, he, he was holding on tight to that one. Of course, I never apologized. I never should have just apologized. You did apologize or you didn't apologize? No, I went like this with my hands, but I don't really think that's an apology. Yeah. It's just sort of me putting my hands up as I admitted that I did it but I didn't apologize <laughs> I'm still working on those issues I have certain issues with, with apologizing for things that I do I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> so this is a question that was submitted early um what is the best thing that's happened since starting the we happy few page like with the page? Uh, see I'm gonna sound like Ted Lasso here but like I just it's just been a pleasure working with Leighton to be honest with you he has put a spark in my life, that boy. Um, it's just been great having this kind of buddy friendship and having someone is he, he's the, literally the most enthusiastic dude I've ever met in my life. And I am by nature pretty lazy. <laughs> so it's just great working with someone who's got such a passion for this kind of stuff and just constantly ticking his toe up my ass. I can never rest. It's just like, what if we do this? What if we do that? What if we do that? And it's just brilliant. It's just... It's just been great wherever he goes. It's just been a great couple of years working with a really cool guy who's just like just enthusiastic. It's like I have my own human border collie slash Labrador. Yeah, that's the thing said to me. Without sound, yeah, well, I, yeah, you're a wanker. Uh, without, <laughs> that's what I normally get. <laughs> without yeah. sound, Ned Lasso. It's it's been about the it's been about the friendship more than anything, more than or whatever we've really done. It's been a, been a great pleasure for me. Lane, what about you? Yeah, like what Matt says, it's, it's, I feel incredibly privileged to be in this position. And, you know, I still pinch myself. You know, I watched, I watched it when it came out 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Um, you know, I, I, I watched it, it joined the forces. Um, I remember reading the book because I was bored one day and I found the book and I, I couldn't put it down. And it just opened up that enthusiasm to learn more. Um, Initially, about the hundred and first, I thought, well, actually, there's, there's a few more other units in in Normandy, and started, you know, going down that way. Um, I've always, I've always had an interest from early doors from watching Memphis Bell as a, as an eight year old, mm -hmm. um, but Band of Brothers just captivated me, and being able to obviously, you know, get to know Matt really well, and you know, some of the guys, Doug Allen, you know, obviously, then Scott Gibson from from Pacific, Freddie Joe. It's it's, I still pinch myself if I'm honest. I feel incredibly privileged to be in this position. Oh. I still can't segue. believe it. Well, good segue, Leighton, up to, into Memphis Bell. Nice. I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we've got one of the Mem we've got a podcast coming up with the Memphis Bell ah. in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I'm pretty friggin' stoked by that. 
you got DB Sweeney coming on. We're recording with DB Sweeney. Oh, nice. So I'm pretty friggin' stoked um, that that can happen. And, and we've got a guy from a Tarantino film coming on as well, you know. Uh, that's the right. I don't know if anybody got that one, but I can't believe I just did that. Um, so I, I, that's, that's fucking amazing. You know, a guy who's in one of my favorite ever scenes in a Tarantino film is, well, I just asked the question. And he's like, yeah, of course, man. When? So I'm like, <laughs> wow, okay. Easy as that. Do we, have, do we have Dead Eyes coming on as well? Are we going to get yes. Dead Eyes? Um, Dead Eyes has said he'll come on as well. The guy who does the, the, the Band of Brothers podcast, which is, he's just done with Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Connor has said he'll come on at some point as well. I'm looking forward to that. What, um, how did you guys start thinking about incorporating the Pacific into the We Happy Few page? Um, There's only 10 loads in bands, so we had to sort of... Yeah. Part of HBO, isn't it? The um, soon-to-be trilogy. Mm -hmm. It, it yeah. made me sort of explore that, and it's been an absolute pleasure again. Is it, well, it helped that there's a right, crossover with writers, so we already had an in writers yeah. produce, so we could get um, that knucklehead Yost back on if we wanted him. Um, well, we wanted to get Chris on anyway, uh, and he was he was really cool. So so we had ins with all those guys anyway. And then, how did you hook up with Scott Gibson? We can't get rid of that dude now. Uh, he asked me to dinner. Who's was up. Uh, no, um, he subscribed into the website, and it was. And I said this. I've told this Scott a million times. We chatted about this the other day, actually, again. Um, and I never really look at who's subscribed. You know, probably quite bad. But one day, I just thought, you know, last year, I just, I just, I just looked, and I think I clicked on two of them. But well, the first one, you know, yeah, okay, oh, okay, that's nice. The next one, obviously, is Scott introduced himself as you know, I played Aka Kaldane in in the Pacific. It's like, holy shit, you know, we've got Aka Kaldane. This amazing person from the Pacific, you know, I thought, oh my God, there's, there's something else. He was straight on the phone to Matt, you know, oh my God, you know, we've got Scott Gibson subscribing to us, following us. I could, couldn't believe it. Um, and he's been an absolute pleasure to, you know, to know. And he's so passionate about the Pacific as well. Um, so, so passionate and hooking him up with, you know, Garrett and Henry and, you know, with his relationship with Taco Bell, uh, Mitch Bell as well. It's, it's just created a new bunch of friends and, <laughs> Absolute honour, absolute pleasure, if I'm honest, yeah. To, to speak to these guys about their experience as well and their other work, if I'm honest, yeah. Yeah. Forced me to watch the show as well. Uh, how did <laughs> yeah, you yeah. first meet? Hang on, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the other one. No, questions. you're fine. That's, it's good that how, it pops up. How did you and Leighton, Leighton, Matthew, how did you guys meet? Grinder. <laughs> figures. Figures as much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, a swap meet for weird toys. Um, we first met in Bastogne, face to face. Yeah, uh, face -to -face. Uh, banging questions, um, fun stuff. But we're both rugby fanatics, and well, Leighton, of course, is Welsh, and my father's Welsh, so I'm a Welsh rugby fan. So, uh, we we'd be sort of like jipping one another off online. That's me typing, by the way, uh, for a while, and then I went to Bastogne. It was a weird thing that whole thing was weird that serendipity i was in bastone and reg who's done some of uh, th that great video stuff for us um uh, reg, uh, he i bumped into him and he was like i'm doing um an event in bastone in december do you want to come and i was like yeah but i was thinking i'm not, I'm not in the bastone episode so i'm kind of a bit weird being there but it was me and shane and chris uh, langua were there uh, and I was just kind of like hanging around, signing stuff, and then Leighton just popped up in front, in front of me, and he's just like, oh, "All right, mate." But Leighton, <laughs> you, used to, you, you used to be a fan of a kid show I was in before Band of Brothers, uh, which was how he knew me originally. So we just got yakking about that, and then also we're both fans of a show called Alan Partridge that I don't suppose you can in America. It's with Steve Coogan, uh, who's just this quintessential Middle English idiot. Uh, that we both love so we were just trading alan partridge quotes i still do that now and then yeah and then it was shortly after bastone that that we met for the, yeah. the sign so that's that's just how we yeah. met um <laughs> and then you you know the, yeah the, the the live potential live show in the uk sort of Simmering, um, and obviously yep. Matt 
it's that conversation. But then obviously COVID struck, so that was high bosh aside. But that's still in the background at the moment, still working, believe it or not. Um, obviously, we've got Eindhoven as well. Ah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's if you're there. watching, a plug for Eindhoven. Come visit us in Eindhoven, 29th and 30th of April. Go on our social I thought yeah. it was your first, like, in-person event for We Happy Few, right? Yes, it will be. Uh, me, Huberman, uh, Ross McCall, Mark Lawrence, and who else we got? Layton? Tim Matthews. Tim Matthews, Pink Tim Matthews Pink Color. Pink Color. Yes, not exactly a lightweight. Tim Matthews is there as well. Oh, he's bringing his son, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that's fine, that's fine. He's bringing his son. I thought that would be really cool if he did. Uh, and we've just, we, it's typical... Oh, so it went, we've been sort of mulling, mulling over doing one in Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, so we hooked up with someone there. It's like, sure, it went really big really quickly. So that will probably be our next one, although not in the time frame that he wants us to do it in. Cause it's yeah, crazy. I think about that. Yeah. And well, that was quite bizarre. Memorial. He wanted to do it by Memorial Day. And I was like taking a shower today. I was like, ah, no, we can't get it done. By I thought the next one after that yeah. will be D.C., I think, because I used to live there, so. And that was, I remember, I didn't, you know, Matt briefly told me who this individual was. I didn't really know. And when Matt was, when we were on the call the other night and Matt, and they were talking and obviously saying what he's done, I was like, I'm wearing a fucking Star Wars t-shirt here, which is quite worn. I'm clearly wrong. I should be wearing a suit or something, you know. And You used to work on the hill, you know. Shit in hell. Knows the current administration, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it it was. I know, I can dress to impress, but... uh, I he wouldn't look great after He did, he did actually, yeah. And that was pretty spectacular listening to him. And, you know, his ideas and his enthusiasm of our role was like, oh my God, this could, it could potentially happen. That was quite mind blowing. So, are you guys expecting to do kind of more in person events and still do the Zoom? Are you going to shift focuses or? Um, uh, that's a good question, actually. I think we might just follow the sort of. <laughs> the way that things have opened up and, and, and I think people would be well, know, less inclined to do Zoom stuff now, but since sort of COVID has sort of dissipated, I, I think it's probably better for us to try and do more in-person stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to follow a similar format, I mean, without being too disparaging of other people that have organized the in-person events, but they tend to be a little industrial. Uh, you get people file through and sign this and, and, and the questions tend to be, you know, not great. Uh, it, it helps that I know these guys personally and I know mm-hmm. what tri- triggers triggers them and makes them laugh, which is why I was able to make Ross McCall Corpse on that podcast the other day, even though I'll never get him back for the time he did it to me, which I'm not going to talk about. Uh, so I know I know what sort of like gets the, gets the juices going and what will just, you'll just get a rope three word answer uh so i I think that's the sort of advantage we have is that and and i know which groups it's not by accident that we've put the people together that we put the people together with yeah because those are friends Mm -hmm. um so i know how to put the right pods of people together as well and it, it works if you if you do it episode by episode it's as simple as that really because those guys have hung out together uh, for for a good period of time, so I think I think we'll probably yeah look to do more live stuff because there's only so it, like I said it, 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 it's, we got that sort of um, group dynamic going where people want to be a part of things. So the next logical step is you know let's do it all in the same room, and we we will still so we'll think about recording it and beaming it out and stuff like that as well, or at least recording it and putting it on a podcast. But yeah, if we can get in the room and and just just get people to get the sense of what it's like actually there when these guys' juices get flowing because mm-hmm. it's pretty spectacular. Uh, so, yeah, that's our next our next thing, I think. Yeah. Right. And have another crack of Bastone <laughs> as well. And Yeah. yeah. Bastone? Yeah, I think another crack of Bastone. I'd love to do that one. Yeah. What yeah, actors yeah. crew are on the wish list for Zooms? Uh... Oh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we'd like to get Ron, we'd like to get Damien, and Frank John Hughes, obviously. We reached out to Damien, I think we reached out to Damien, I have to chase that up, actually. Um, I'm sort of looking for the right time to get those guys, and whether or not it 
whether or not it's an in-person one or a Zoom, do you know what I mean? Because you kind of just, like, because you're only going to get them once, do you know what I mean? So um, I'm, we're looking for the right time to get those guys. Frank was going to come on one. Frank John Hughes was going to come on one. But he's, he kind of danced to the beat of his own drum and he was just like, no, I'm sorry, man, I can't do it. And then mm-hmm. I didn't hear from him for a while. But I'm going really well with Frank John Hughes, so I'm assuming he had something else going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, we've had Colin Hanks movies. as well. He, I think he said about coming on, didn't he, last year? Yeah, he did, yeah. When we, we, were, we were speaking about uh, F8. Yep. Yeah, so I think that's one way. Obviously, it's in the back pocket to think about in the future. But yeah, it's, Colin, you, know, Colin, <clears throat> you know, who Matt's spoken Colin about, yeah. It's, life, so. so working with um, having, you know, veterans and their families on the We Happy Few events, um, what is the most shocking, shockingly emotional thing you guys have learned with the veterans and their families? Uh, I think that's that Chendrison story, isn't it? The yeah. one that he tells about Frank John Hughes. Yeah. Um, so Frankie, uh, after he, 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 the, Chendrison tells it way better than I can, but basically uh, after 9-11, the Band of Brothers became a <clears throat> inadvertently uh, a tool for recruitment. A lot of guys were just like, right, that's it, I'm going to go and I'm going to mm-hmm. go to Iraq or, or wherever, Afghanistan. And I, Frank John Hughes was doing a tour of a hospital, a veterans hospital, and there was a young kid in there of, of all but 19 or something, and he'd been badly blown up, uh, burned, and it was an amputee as well. Was it? Maybe I'm layering on too much, but he was in a bad, bad way. And Frank went in to say, you know, Hi, I'm Frank John Hughes or whatever. And the kid was just like, oh, my God, you're Frank John Hughes. You play Garnier. You're the reason I signed up. Oh. And Frank's face was just like, and it took him like a, he took him a long time to kind of process this, like, oh, my God, what have I done type of thing. Um, I think that was, that, was the, that was the most tricky one to deal with, wasn't it? Because I don't really know what to say to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think... Um, O'Keefe meeting, so I say O'Keefe and um, Matt Hickey meeting O'Keefe's widow as well. Yeah, yeah. He's got his own regrets about not going to the premiere and actually meeting Patrick, who died a year later. And he, he had the opportunity, but obviously he was thinking about school at the time rather than what he was a part of. And I think that was a big regret for him. And obviously meeting um, his wife, uh, his widow, was, I think, Everyone on the, I remember watching all the cameras, and I think there's a few people, you know, wiping their eyes because it was pretty um, emotional for everyone. To I, see. I did a tour with uh, uh, Bradford Freeman, the last remaining Easy Company member, um, and he was telling me when they were in, when we were in the uh, Bois Jacques, um, whether or not he's remembered it correctly, I don't know, but he said that when Muck and Pencarlo were hit. Uh, they asked him to go in and get something, you know, was my ID or something. And he was just, he kept calling them the Tampa boy. So I don't know which one of them came from Tampa. So like, why the Tampa boy? And he was like, I, I went in to try and get something and there was just nothing of them left. It was just, they were just being vaporized. That to me, particularly when he was saying it, because it wasn't, it, this was just from the horse's mouth. Do you know what I mean? This mm-hmm. was just this guy. And you watched him. And he's 95, or he was at the time. Uh, you just watch him just go into this kind of like, he was, as he was telling me, you could see him just go into this trance. Of, and clearly, he was just back remembering it. Uh, that, I mean, that's nothing to do with what we do. Um, but that was the most sort of like shocking thing I've, I've heard um, from Brad Freeman. Who, by the uh, way, oh, actually, no. Um, yeah, sorry, adding on to that. Um... Uh, Henry, Henry's become a good friend. And obviously, when we had him first on, he told us his v- very extremely emotional story about his father um, passing away, where his mother's, his, you know, his, his comfort in Eugene, and obviously whispering, you know, you're going to see your mother, you're going to see your father, you're going to see Akak, and I think again, obviously we were recording it, might you know, and and I was like, oh my god, it was that was quite breathtaking. It was, yeah, that was quite emotional as well. So this question, I got multiple uh, submissions for this on Wednesday. How, for each of you, how has Band of Brothers impacted your lives? Um, it's cost me 20 quid each time. I'm about to buy a box set, it's come out. 
so it's cost me financially yeah that's <laughs> uh maybe that back map by the way <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's in here somewhere. Also, it says like three ninety three ninety nine on it, mate. So stop trying to bezel funds out of me. Uh, you big fat liar. No. Uh, um... uh, uh, yeah, it uh, latterly, initially, because uh, I, I I finished the show and went off to do other things, and uh, the show came out, and then of course it came out and it coincided with nine eleven, and so it was kind of weird how it got apart from sort of certain fan base kind of buried uh, because people didn't want to see it because of, you know, what had just happened. And then uh, it was weird. It, it, like I became aware that it was growing in size around about 2009, 10 from the very mercenary fact that I suddenly got an enormous residual check. <laughs> it was like, oh, like, bloody hell, people are really watching this. Uh, and then social media became a thing. And uh, I would, uh, like I told you, I'm like, my wife called me Matt 1904 because that's where I am technologically. So I started this Facebook and it was just ping up, hey man, little big man and brothers fan. Um, and then it, it wasn't until I started working with the World War II Museum, which was in about 2018. Uh, and then they had all these tours, it's like easy company tours that go around the whole of, you know, all the battle stuff. They last for like two weeks. And uh, then I started to realize how, how huge it was. And it's only recently since we started doing this that it's sort of, it's impacted me in such a big way. But it's really cool that it's, um, I've started to like get relationships with all the old cast mates as well, especially guys that I didn't really know all that well as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just this. <laughs> It's just this. It's great to have. It's a, there's a bunch of guys. There's also one guy. I have, one, I have one friend called Mark who I don't see for like ten years, and then we walk to the room and we just pick up where we left off ten years ago. Uh, and this is like an entire group of dudes. Well, that's the exact same thing. Like you just you just walk into a room with those guys, and and you, you just you can just carry on where you left. You haven't spoken to them six years ago. So I guess that's the way it's impacted me the most. I mean, that's what sort of cudlets would say, isn't it? It's just like the best thing about it is that my, my buddy's on this Zoom right now. Mm -hmm. So let's, oh, sorry, my question box keeps disappearing. Let's pull up this question. Uh, what do you hope both new and veteran followers take away from being part of the We Happy Few community? Merch. <laughs> Yeah, and buy a buy a it ticket as well, and print it out, and yeah, for Eindhoven, <laughs> yeah, buy a ticket for Eindhoven, and uh, <laughs> I just uh, available in the shop seventeen ninety nine. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I uh, <clears throat> I guess I guess the understanding. I sound like Ted Lasso again. I guess the understanding that it's a two way street that this doesn't work unless people buy into it whether you're a fan of the show per se or whether you're a fan of like what we do like your your interest your sort of like enthusiasm as a sort of fandom is what pushes what we do otherwise we're just two tits talking to ourselves on a computer mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know what i mean so that intro that enthusiasm and then afterwards all the social media stuff we read all of it probably the twitter stuff like me lane and i are awake till about three o'clock in the morning off those live shows <laughs> looking at all the like social media and kind of buzzing by it so i guess in essence it's just that like what your enthusiasm matters uh and your keenness uh, uh is is what drives what we do so if you haven't taken that away Right now, that's what you should take away from it, because without you guys, it's just it's just nothing. Absolutely, and I can agree more. Um, and it's it's great that you know. You, 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 we, 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 you're just you're just saying yeah. You can't just nod along with what I said. No, no. I mean, it's just creating you know, a community. You know, and it, we're into personal. You know, we we interconnect. You know, we connect with these people as well. We talk to them. That's a lovely shirt, by the way. Um, but we talk to them. You know, we're not like. Some of the biggest stuff, you know, where, you know, Scrubs, I, I believe they stole our format, if I'm honest. Not gonna, cause we, we, you know, because they've started doing it. Scrubs have started doing that. Now that they've gone live, but obviously they got to the live part before us. But doing the Zoom stuff, that was after us, by the way. Um, I think I need to speak to Zach Braff about that. <clears throat> but yeah. if you message into those, 
if you messaged into those, you'd probably get an assistant if you're lucky. But with us, it's who you're going to get. You're going to get, you know, Diane. You're going to get Anna. You're going to get Matt. You're going to get. You don't know. It's but it's you, you got. You know, you're going to chat to us. You are going to chat to us directly. Um, and we do talk about it. if you know you mention something, you raise something. We talk about it. You know, nothing is ever shoved under the carpet. It's how can we address this or what can we do to to make it a better experience. We care. That's but what it is. People, we yeah, we, we give a shit. So Absolutely care. give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is each of your guys' favorite episode from Band of Brothers in the Pacific? Uh, uh, seven from Band of Brothers. And the, pe- I don't know the number, but the Pele Lu Landings from mm-hmm. Pacific. Four. Uh, four. Was that four? four? Those two. Uh, Seven Banner Brother episode seven is almost perfect, uh, and, and Graham Yost will tell you that he'll say it is perfect. Actually, I wrote it. Um, and it yeah. The episode four of, of the Taylor—that's when it really kicks off the Pacific, and it's yeah. just, just brilliant. Yeah, and I keep going on about uh, that scene where they, where they, they go out into the white light and the red, <laughs> red light going, and things. Uh, it's I was terrified of that, so. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, and any any episode that Scott Gibson isn't in is quite good as well. Is he watching? <laughs> but no, <laughs> four, is, four is fantastic. <laughs> We've had four is fantastic. <laughs> Layton, what are your episodes in Band of Brothers? Uh, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say four as well for Pacific. So yeah, like I said that's when it really goes. And I'm going to say eight with Band because I feel like you've seen a lot of the guys grow especially Scott Grimes. I feel like you see, he's literally, you see his, his growth as a person from this very young, naive uh, trooper who wants, to, he wants to Luga for his kid brother to this guy who's just, he's had enough. He wants to go home. You know, he's, he's breaking, breaking point. Funny, you know. But yeah, I think eight, because I think Scott, Scott Grimes and that is, he steals it for me. Yeah, breaking point seven. Yeah, breaking point seven definitely a good one um i guess this is kind of for matthew um is there any deleted scenes from the show that you wish would have made it in if you know i don't even know if you know yep absolutely there is um and it's one little bit uh it's in episode five um the after the crossroads so we run the crossroads we all hit the deck and everyone just starts shooting at the german soldiers um, I had to, Tom Hanks had the camera over my shoulder like that, was, <laughs> and he wanted me to reload. He was just like close up on my face, and he, I, as you know, there are there are eight rounds in those M1s. So he went ping, 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 and, then, and uh, uh, when the eighth round is gone, it, this little cartridge case just goes ping out the top. I I managed, as it went ping, I managed to pull out another cartridge out of my pocket like that. <laughs> Reloaded, bang, 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 in like half a second. It was uh-huh. bam, bam. And then we went, he went cut, and he was just like, nice reload, Sergeant Dalbert. And I thought, great. But the problem was, was it, they were film blanks. So the, the, end, the ends of those bullets are just kind of pinched, pinched mm-hmm. off like that, and they make a big flash out. And they didn't have the, the proper like bullet heads on that you see in most of the close-up episodes. Mm-hmm. So they, so they couldn't use it. But I wanted that to be in because it was a really quick, badass reload, and it never made it in. Aww. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else. There's a bunch of stuff that we've shot. Episodes four and four, I think. A bunch of stuff that didn't really make it. Uh, there's loads of pictures of it online, us singing and all sorts of stuff. And then the pub at the beginning, they were never sure about. I also quite like some of the original episode one as well. Um, uh, but that got completely rewritten and recut as well. Um, there was a whole thing where this guy she didn't open and hits the floor one of the troopers and we go and get him and stuff. Uh, but no, only the reload. Only the reload. I wish that made it in. So this was another question that was submitted on Wednesday. Do you guys do anything else history or military related outside of Band of Brothers as in helping out with veterans or volunteering or anything like that? Uh, I tour the World War Two Museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe I'm going out again later on this year. Uh, uh, but other than that, no. 
Um, I was in the Air Force for 15 years, tour of Afghanistan, then the withdrawal of Iraq from Kuwait City in the villa. I'm complaining about that I, one. I had a pimple uh, on the inside of my nose that really hurt. Is that similar? <laughs> Yeah, 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 similar. totally similar, mate, totally similar. Uh, and I know I'm an re active reservist, so this is where I am right now in this lovely temporary accommodation that they put me in. Fabulous. Five, did, so, okay, that's my fault for this being rearranged for a little bit later because I was worried about time clash with me working. Yeah, and not informing Matthew, but that was also my fault too, so I'll take... You're the organiser, yeah. <laughs> The reason I'm going to miss the second half of the rugby is because you two couldn't get it together. To well, where are we? Why are you on a set of shelves as well? I'm, I, I'm away working, aren't I? I'm in, this, I'm in my room where I'm just been working for the weekend with the Air Force. Right. Okay. Listen, Matthew. Listen. <laughs> I tune in and out. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you say a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are crazy. Okay. Um, I think we. I think we did cover this, but Rachel, let's go over it again for Rachel. What was, um, each of you, what was the favorite episode that you guys hosted on We Happy Few? Uh, I still think the best one was number nine. Yeah, because those guys were sharp, but I did like the Pacific one as well, just for the fact that <laughs> somehow we kind of like got all of them on at one time, didn't we? So you yeah, like, actually, yeah. And do that, and then we get a couple of guys and do that, and it's just like boom, boom, boom. They all turn up, and it was phenomenal. I was, yeah, and John Sader and all these guys. That was a lot of yeah. fun because I yeah, have no relationship to any of those guys at all. Mm -hmm. And then Freddie Joe turning up for that was hysterical. That was brilliant. He couldn't, couldn't get his, he was like, <clears> doing some like, I love Lucy routine <laughs> trying to get his thing on. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't go tune in at all. So I really, I really enjoyed, personally, I really enjoyed that one. Um, just because it was a totally new, new, totally new experience. They were a really cool, cool set of guys. And it was one of the things where you just had to like the touch paper and let them go as well, because mm -hmm. they hadn't run another in years. So they just wanted to talk and, and chip one another off and stuff. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one. That was brilliant. Yeah. And that was a huge thanks to Scott and Josh for that one as well, making that happen. Yeah. I enjoyed and getting those guys on. Yeah. I enjoyed Lucy. I used to enjoy getting Lucy to say chocolat pour vous as well. To me, that was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what made it? So, you guys just started the podcast, and originally uh -huh. the podcast was going to be the original idea. As I'm throwing my pen across this, um, was the original idea. Why did you guys decide to start it now? Like, was it perfect timing? Did it just seem? Oh, the pod, the, the, the actual podcast. Pod, the, the actual podcast that we do now. Yeah, uh, we, I, we. It, there was way more. There was loads we wanted to do that we could put on the zooms, uh, with typically because, like, when we did the episode four special, when we had Michael Cudlitz on, like, Leighton and, and, and Joe, as was then, were not desperate to ask him about The Walking Dead and stuff. But like he was like dead back in that because all the other guys were on. It's like, well, mm -hmm. what's about the Band of Brothers? So what we wanted to do is do get guys on and just talk about all the other stuff that we couldn't talk about on the Zoom. So talk about you know we you know, we like the Ross McCall one. We don't really we, we had him on our podcast and we barely spoke about Band at all. We spoke about all the other stuff. So mm -hmm. that was kind of the idea with that is just get guys on and then intermingle it with other episodes where we're doing historical stuff like the the Henry Sledge and trilogy that we're putting out with uh, Soul David. But also just to get guys on and just just ask them about stuff that they don't get asked about on on band stuff because they just sort of only talking about their band and brothers and stuff. That was kind of the idea behind that. And um, yeah, and a little bit of self promotion as well for them, sort of another medium, yeah. sort of talk about their upcoming projects and and sort of you know just using yeah, us yeah, as, a, as a tool for that. I think you know, like we. we it's a big deal for a guy for guys to come on and, and do this for us. It's a huge mm -hmm. thing. I mean, and we've done, you know, we've, we've paid people back, like, oh, you know, we sponsored um, the Harry Welch flag, you know, if you, if you saw that, uh, and all that sort of business. So we're trying it back a bit, but, like, for, for guys to give up of their time and come on for basically our event, mm -hmm. um, we kind of figure that we owe them a little bit as well. So if we can then get them on and say, look, you know, 
you know, you've got this like movie that you wrote coming out that's going to have a very niche audience. Let's try and get, push that out there, and maybe if we can get, you know, more people to, to watch it, whatever. Because oh, well, he's got this movie. That that's that's kind of what we got involved in that as well. Um, so yeah, so it is like Leighton says, it sort of helps promote stuff as well. And then you know, it's a, it's not entirely altruistic. It feeds back in again because then they're like, yeah, those guys are all right, you know. So if we ask them back on for something else, it's all just it's all sort of mutual appreciation, really. Um, and we just get guys that are kind of fun to talk to as well. I mean, I, I, I always love talking to Ross. He just, we just have a competition to see if we can make one another laugh. Um, <laughs> throw one another off completely. Uh, but it's just fun to talk to your buddies as well, really. And just, and just let people listen. Perfect. So actually, I'm actually curious about this question. Um, it's for Matthew. If you didn't play Talbert, who would you have wanted to play? Um, um, well, it's, that, it's a weird question because I have to ask it, answer it now rather than then because I, I mean, as I've spoken about before, I've cast so late, I never read any of it. Um, I don't know necessarily. I don't know. I don't know how to play. Uh, uh, it's weird. It's, weird it's like, a weird question. It is any, but... weird question because any of the characters, I just think, no, that's the perfect guy. After that, I don't think I could. I think like those guys are just they're just all set in stone. Um, so I don't know. Um, I, I don't Maybe leave I, I could see you as a as a leave I think you. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Should, yeah. Maybe a leave I think. You think? Or yeah, I think so. Or... Yeah. I made a fairly yeah, well, good look because I could do fairly okay impersonations as well. But then, you know, you're, you're, you're sitting in a pretty serious church saying you could, I'm not saying I could do it better than Rick Gomez, but <laughs> maybe abundantly clear. I think it would be a fun character to play that. So maybe I'll say Luz. Mm -hmm. But please don't think I'm saying I could have done it better because I couldn't. Somebody said Spears. I'm sorry, Matthew, I can't see you playing Spears. That's. <laughs> no, they can play really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, we're going to take two more questions. So if you guys have any questions, submit them in the question box right now because we're coming close to the end of the hour. Uh, let's see. That hour. Yeah. I charge quite a lot, but usually. That hour went by pretty, pretty, pretty darn quick. So, well, here's, I mean, here's one question since. Uh, Nothing really Band of Brothers related. We happy for you, but how is your guys' day going? How is that? What now? How is your guys' day going? Oh, uh, that's a very leading question in a weird way because Leighton gave me two tickets to watch the rugby yesterday in Cardiff, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I live here. And Cardiff is a different country. It's the capital of Wales down there, and that's a six-hour drive. So I drove there yesterday morning, uh, went to check into my hotel in a town nearby that Leighton knows called Newport, which is there. And when I put it into the back nav, it said 250 miles that way mm -hmm. because it's Newport, Pembrokeshire. So I didn't have a hotel. <laughs> so after the game, I thought, but I'm not going all the way to Pembrokeshire. I might as well drive home. So I watched the game. The game kicked off at 8, finished at 10, and then I got oh. the car and went home and I got home at 4.30 4 in the morning. Um, so I was a little... And of course, I have a two-year-old daughter, which my wife kindly stopped jumping on my head at 6 a.m. She gave me a few hours of sleep, but I've been a bit like this all day. And so I thought this podcast was at 4, so I was like, right, I'm just going to try and keep myself awake till 4. So I was like roguishly hoovering the house like an electric nan, you know, and then I don't know, trying to find stuff to do and walk the dog and all that kind of stuff. And then I was like, if it was at 5.30, I was like, all oh, mm -hmm. right, that's it. So I put the Scotland-Italy game on, fell asleep instantly. Mm -hmm. So I just about woke up for this. So that's my day going. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Wait, and how's your day going? I have not long finished work, on, so... Sorry, mate, sorry, mate, sorry to interrupt you, but you're confusing, confusing me with someone who gives a shit. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. He hasn't even said thanks for the tickets, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did, he did. I, no, I don't apologize. I don't hang people. I'm sorry. 
I'll let you kill the yeah, that's it. Big Bang Theory. <laughs> that's my day. It's just, I've just finished work, so. <laughs> and I'm going to be in this lovely, glamorous room for the rest of the evening. Seriously, you look Probably. like you're a snow no. covered in here. Yeah, it's, it's quite basic. You know, when they put me originally in the, the party block, and I thought, oh, fuck this, I'm 40 years old. I'm not, you know, so I walked back down to LC, when I got my key from it says, yeah, I want another room, give me another room, I'm not going in there. Uh, is so, those the Sultan and, and it's the old man. Yeah. Is that the, I wrote the Sultan Hangy Bow uh, shelves behind you, <clears> Mikey? <throat> Possibly, yeah. Yeah, the Hooban mm -hmm. shelves. Nice. <laughs> nice, I put several of those up that lasted 13 minutes. So apparently this is a really important question. Scott wants to know when Freddie Joe's coming back. <laughs> Never he wants. <laughs> when is Scott Gibson coming back on is the biggest yeah. question. Yeah, Freddie Scott Joe's will be coming back on. Mm -hmm. Freddie Joe can come back on when I let him out of my cellar. Oh. Hi, Joseph. Like, so many follow-up like, questions. <laughs> who's rattling in my cellar right now, Freddie Joe? Keep him down there. <laughs> to frighten the neighborhood children. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Matthew and Lane, thank you so much for coming on and asking these questions, or asking these questions. I ask, answering these questions and uh, taking time out of your day. I super appreciate it. This has been uh, great. So definitely appreciate it. Wonderful. Yes. Oh, well, thank uh, you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having uh, Leighton. Thanks for having Matthew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and thanks everybody else for joining on history behind the page definitely appreciate it we'll be live again next friday so you guys have a fantastic day thanks very much you, Sarah. thank cheers. you guys aha <laughs> uh -huh. all right we're gonna <laughs> yeah, cheers, <Sarah. laughs> all right guys we're gonna crack out here see you then uh, cheers Sarah. Bye. Thanks. Okay, bye